these five things to spot wildlife. Number one, take advantage of a natural spotlight, the sun. As the sun is rising, it's casting a spotlight on the landscape. Even in a forested area, some sunlight may peek through and highlight wildlife. The mornings are great since many animals are just waking up and starting their day. This dragonfly was illuminated by the rising sun. The timing was perfect. This eastern fence lizard might have eluded me if the sun wasn't shining on it since it's well camouflaged. This red fox was sitting in a field almost hidden. The sunlight really caused me to notice the movement of it. This question mark butterfly really glowed with the sun shining on it. I probably would have noticed it with less light, but the angle of the sun helped bring out the orange against the brown tree bark. If you can see your shadow in front of you, you're bound to see wildlife being spotlighted by the sun. Number two, stop, look, and listen. When you're walking and stop, wildlife usually goes back to whatever it was doing. This eastern cottontail was right in front of me, but continued eating when I stopped. While on a trail, I stopped and looked up and happened to spot this great blue heron in a tree. It was busy preening and stayed in that spot while I took a video and some photos. Using binoculars or a spotting scope, as well as a camera with a zoom lens, helps you get closer to wildlife without them noticing your presence. This great blue heron was busy catching a blue crab and didn't notice me. As you're looking at different angles, make sure to listen too. You might hear wildlife singing or eating. Sometimes they're making sounds as they move close to you. It definitely helps to walk quietly and avoid talking if you're with others. I could hear this young orchard oriole before I saw it. Especially in the spring, many young birds are out and about waiting for a parent to feed them. Number three, check out edge habitat. Edge habitat is an area where different plant communities meet. Wildlife will visit the edge of the forest to go to a field or the grasses along a road or path to feed. Animals have a richer habitat because they can use both communities. These white-tailed deer were feeding next to the road, but could quickly run into the tall grasses if they felt threatened. These wild turkeys were on the trail next to the forest. They feel protected because they can quickly disappear into the forest if necessary. If there is water at the edge habitat, consider it a bonus. Many species will come to the water to drink or bathe. While on an observation tower, a red fox came out of the grasses to get a drink. And wildlife that spend a lot of time in the water may move towards the shoreline to rest, like this green frog hanging out in the grasses. Number four, walk backwards sometimes if you can safely do so. Be sure to stop sometimes and walk backwards, or simply look in the direction from where you came. The sun is moving, and what you saw while you were walking forward is now behind you. These two northern flickers were illuminated by the sun as I turned around on the trail. This hibiscus turret bee was busy gathering pollen from this swamp hibiscus, which I didn't see as I walked past it. When I turned around and started walking backwards, I noticed it. So it was good timing to turn around just then. I would have missed this beautiful flower and insect shot if I hadn't turned around at this moment. Number five, look for oddities, shapes, colors, movement, things like that. No matter where you are, pay attention for movement or colors that don't belong. It's like something isn't quite right about what I'm seeing. If you visit the same place often, this can be easier than if it's a new spot, but it's not impossible if it's a new spot. Do you see any wildlife in this shot? This deer blended in with the grasses around it, but then I noticed movement and realized it was a white-tailed deer. Many times it can be something as simple as a speck of white that looks out of place. As I zoomed in on the white object, I found this Virginian tiger moth that was resting on a leaf. This large lace border moth almost looked like a bird dropping from a distance. But then as I got closer, I realized it was a moth.
Hopefully this video has given you some ideas on how to get better wildlife photographs or just view wildlife in general. Let me know in the comments below if there are things that you do that help you get better wildlife photographs. Until next time, have a great day.